Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are excited about this video today. We're gonna to talk about our favorite military campground. And we haven't been there for about a year and a half, but we didn't wanna put out this video because of the COVID restrictions and we it was closed and we knew that everybody would wanna go there as soon as they <laughs> heard us talk about it. So we decided to put it off until now and I just want to say one more thing. I'm really missing this place because it is May 30th today and it is 48 degrees outside at our house. <laughs> so um, we're really reminiscing about this place and enjoying it. And um, if you can access military bases, you're going to want to learn about camping on Key West. There are lots of changes, so take anything you, you've you heard in the past with a grain of salt. They just came out with a bunch of new rules that we're going to talk about. So stick around to hear about our favorite military campground. So we're going to talk about military camping on Key West. And the people who can use military campgrounds are obviously active and retired military, reserve and guard, disabled veterans, and even DOD civilians and surviving spouses. Um, so what are the campgrounds on Key West? You actually have three options. The first one that you see here on the map is Sigsby. This is where we stayed, so we will be providing more details on that in just a minute. The next one is Trumbo Point. This is all dry camping and it's only open during their high season, which is mid-October through April, but it is also waterfront. And then they have just this year, they're going to have new deluxe waterfront sites at the Truman Annex. Let's talk about Sigsby since that is where we stayed and where we plan to stay again. Sigsby is basically a housing annex for uh, the Naval Air Station Key West, and it has two camping areas with a total of 93 full hookup sites and a few hundred dry camping sites. They also have a nice section of tent camping, and um, I noticed around the tent camping we used to see a lot of those, whatever those lizards are. Oh, iguanas. Iguanas. Everywhere. Yeah, around the tent camping area, which was pretty cool. And you can see right behind us, this is the full hookup sites at, uh, at Sigsby. Um, and then also we're showing you a little video clip of the full hookup sites at Sigsby. That's called the uh, west section where the full hookups are on waterfront. Over in the main section, there is dry camping in the waterfront. And um, we had full hookups that were in the interior of the main section. But as you can see here, it was actually still very close to the water. And finally, here's a view of the interior dry camping section, which is probably the most numerous. And by January, this was completely full. Yeah. Now, when we were there in winter of late 2019, early 2020, you had to rotate. So we stayed in both waterfront dry camping and full hookup interior site. And that was known as the Sigsby Shuffle. So if you've heard about Sigsby Shuffle, that's what that meant. But I'm also here to tell you that no longer exists. They actually took that out. So now you make a specific reservation for either dry camping or full hookups. There's no rotations. And they also limited the amount of time that you can stay there. So you can now only stay maximum of three months. Now you still, we think, now the rules aren't fully fleshed out. It doesn't seem people haven't really tested them yet. But we think if you call, and since there's only 93 full hookups, say you can only get full hookups for one month, well, you get three months to stay. So we think uh, from reading the new rules that what that's going to do is allow you to do two months of dry camping if you want. And I would be willing to do it. I mean, it's really great because they have everything that you need. They have, first off, there's a great breeze. We would open yeah. the windows on each side of our RV and you, when we were in dry camping, and you just get this fabulous breeze that flows through. 
uh, but also they have a really large dump station with a couple of lanes. They have um, water fill for your fresh water tanks in several locations around the campground. Some people in dry camping were close enough to one that they could even just run a hose to it mm -hmm. and not have to move their RV for that uh, fresh water fill. And we even saw a guy pulling his portable wastewater tank thing that they call Blue Boy. He was pulling it with a bicycle. Yeah. I wish I had got a picture of that. <laughs> it was so neat. And we also had um, solar at the time, and between the solar uh, setup and batteries that we had and the breeze that's always coming off the water, um, you hardly ever had to run a generator. It was uh, perfect. Yeah, and one thing I do like about the new rules, speaking of generators, it, because there's a lot of dry camping and everyone has a generator, because there were days it got hot. There, yeah. were, well, there were some days it got hot even in the winter. Or, or maybe humid, you know, and you would want the AC. Um, they do have limits on the noise of the of the generator, so you yeah. can't have like one of them cheap contractor style construction style ones that are really loud. And the one thing that we really love about staying on military bases is the commissary and the exchange, and. There's not many people that live down there on mm -hmm. the on the annex, so that they're pretty small, but they have everything that you need. And uh, the commissary was well stocked, considering it was far away from any other military base, really. Mm -hmm. And then they also had a uh, thirteen foot tall car wash. Yeah. So a lot of people's RVs could get through that car wash. Ours, unfortunately, is thirteen six, so we mm -hmm. didn't attempt it. A massive dog park, um, although you can walk your, your dogs anywhere. But let me just add a little note. That's a new rule also. Two pet limit. Um, and then also they actually have, you'll have to go on their website and we'll put a link in the uh, description of this video to their whole new guide so you can see it all. But they do actually have a list of breeds of dogs that are not allowed. And unfortunately, Chow Chow was one of the ones on it. And I just noticed that because we, we had a Chow Chow um, and he was such a sweetie. Yeah. They also have a fitness center and an outdoor track as well as tennis courts, a marina where you can rent boats. And they also have a bar and grill, which all of this stuff that we just mentioned is all within a five to 10 minute walk of mm -hmm. the campground on Sigsby. It also had a rocky shoreline all around and uh, you could fish every day and it's like 15 steps from your RV. You can throw a line out and catch fish. They have a lot of fish there um, and it was a lot of fun to fish for an hour or so every day um, on a break from work or whatever else we were doing. So you definitely want to bring a bike if you go um, because we, there's not a lot of parking down in Key West. It's very, you know, touristy. And of course we have a massive truck that we pull our fifth wheel with. So instead of taking our truck, we rode our bikes everywhere, day and night. The only rules since it's a military base, of course you got to have a helmet and you have to have a light, a white light on the front and a red light on the back of the bike that I think they even specify it has to be seen from 600 feet. So, you know, that's the military for you. Um, but we rode our bikes everywhere and we rode our bikes like all the way down into Key West. I think it's four miles, which on a bike is not a big deal. And on an e-bike, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. Um, also, um, I mentioned Trumbo Point that people dry camp at. And one of the reasons why they really like that is it is like just outside Trumbo Point, you're at the main part of Key West. Yeah, and there's lots of places to lock your bikes up while you're downtown in Key West. So you don't need to worry about it getting stolen. And um, there's bike lanes on, on most of the roads, mm -hmm. I think. So it was uh, really easy to navigate around on your bicycle. You didn't have to worry and you're much faster than a lot of the traffic during the day because it is a small confined space and so there is a lot of traffic so riding your bike is really the best way to get around 
and it's like being in another country really i mean it's yeah. such a different different atmosphere from being um on the mainland yeah i think people say like they're on key west time or something it's just like really laid back um it, it's just really an, an enjoyable place i felt like um also so let's talk about key west just a little bit and and starting with the bikes again so it wasn't just us um who rode our bikes in everyone else at the campground seemed to but also everyone around the whole island really loved riding their bikes and we were there like i said over the winter and so i participated in a a lighted bike christmas parade and as you can see here there were hundreds of people who rode their bikes all up and down the streets and people were on at restaurants and bars waving and cheering us along and some people had some real elaborate decorations on their bike it was just a lot of fun but there was a lot going on for the holidays they had a regular parade downtown with floats and then they even had a lighted boat parade um, from the historic seaport so it was really cool yeah and then uh, lots of other things to do on the island they have well, they have the Hemingway house where Ernest Hemingway lived, and he has these uh, six-toed cats that live there. I think they call them polydactyl cats, and they're all over the place, and they don't bother you, um, but they're everywhere on that, mm -hmm. on that property. They pretty much have the right-of-way anywhere they're going. And then there's the Little White House, and I forget what president it was. Pretty sure it was Truman yeah um who was at had the little white house and so basically that was like his you know summer getaway and um they wouldn't let us take any video or photos inside but it was pretty neat they had still had it like restored to the point of when he was there with the original furniture and you got a tour and they told you stories about it and they have a historic seaport which had when we were there a lot of fancy yachts were there mm -hmm. uh, docked a lot of restaurants lots of restaurants and bars and places to rent bicycles and things like that uh, lots of gift shops oh and my favorite was kermit's key lime pie store oh yeah they had frozen key lime pie on a stick it was the best thing I think I've ever had. It was so good. And then they also, I think I read somewhere that there are more musicians playing um, per square mile on Key West than anywhere else in the U.S. So there's lots of music. Everywhere you go, you can hear music coming from the bars and restaurants, which is really cool. And it's all different types of music. So um, if you're a music fan, you can uh, really enjoy a lot of different styles of music. And we know that RVers love national parks. And you're in luck in Key West. You can go to Dry Tortugas National Park. The less expensive way to go, and it's still not cheap, but it's totally worth a splurge. The less expensive way to go is on a ferry. Um, and then the more expensive way that is still 100% worth a splurge, and you are saving money if you're staying at Sigsby, is to take a seaplane. Yeah, the seaplane was awesome. And yeah. Sean even rode in the front. Yeah, they let uh, when I when we did it, they they let one person ride in the co-pilot seat, and so I jumped up there really quick, and I think I had to throw a couple of elbows to get up to the front, but <laughs> it was well uh, worth it. And uh, Dry Tortugas is actually awesome when you get there. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing! It's so beautiful. The flight there was beautiful. The plane never gets really high and so you can see like all these sea turtles and stuff in the water and then when you get there there's this historic fort that was actually used um to as a prison during civil war and uh one of the people the doctor who collab who was charged in collaborating in the assassination of president lincoln was there yeah Hey, the best part of Dry Tortugas is the snorkeling. Oh, gosh, that snorkeling was so amazing. They have these old pilings in there, and you, I was kind of a little nervous at first that I was going to, because they warn you not to bump into them. They're rusty. You can get hurt. And so I was kind of nervous at first, but I finally went through, and I was hooked. I went through several times after that. So many fish. Yeah, they're just, like, constantly swimming by you. Big fish, small fish. I mean, it was incredible. And uh, we spent quite a bit of time just snorkeling around and checking everything out. Uh, we got separated, I think, when we were snorkeling. Uh -huh. But no matter where you go, it's a lot of fish to yeah. see. Yeah. 
So all in all, we would 100% recommend a stay at Sigsby, um, at any of the campgrounds. We would, like I said, we would, we're going back and yeah. we will go even if it's dry camping. Um, I think I like Sigsby the best, but I would also stay at Trumbo Point for sure. The, I don't think I'd stay at Truman Annex because the, the drawback to that one is Trumbo and Sigsby, you can both stay at for 90 days. And you know we like to stay someplace at least a month. But um, Truman Annex is more of a vacation style getaway. They're going to have the new deluxe sites. There's not going to be many. So they're going to have a one week limit on those. Yeah. And uh, by the Truman Annex is where there's like a historic uh, Coast Guard ship that you can go see. A diving museum. Yeah. With, like sunken treasure. Yeah, yeah. Lots of cool stuff right around there. So if you are going for just a short stay, that really puts you close to the action. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, down in the description, I will put a link to the guide for the Key West military campground so that you can read about all the rules and guidelines that they have. I'll also include the pricing. I'm not going to say it on here because a year from now this video is going to be great, but the pricing might be different. So that'll be down in the description below and then that way I can keep it updated. Yeah, so uh, until we see you down at Key West, safe, safe travels. travels.